Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome you once again to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. The church is located in the, in the Greece area of Rochester, New York, and uh, we're here every week with our services. We'd be happy to have you here with us anytime. The, the address is 1230 Long Pond, a beautiful uh, church that God has blessed us to be able to, to share and minister at. It's a beautiful brick church right off of Long Pond Road, just off a ridge where Greece Ridge Mall is. And we'd be happy to have you in any of our services. If you're coming from anywhere in the Rochester area, 390 gets you to Ridge. And from Ridge, coming down Ridge to uh, Ridge Road West, West to Long Pond, you'll be here in no time. Very easy to find. If you're in this area, you know where to find us. But you can pick us up, first of all, in terms of our program, anywhere in Rochester on Time Warner or cable on either of the channels that it airs on, depending on where you are and what your setup is. But you can pick up the program at the times that are here on the pro- on the uh, on your screen right now. If you are not watching, or if you cannot, uh, if you don't have cable, you can always reach our program by way of internet through our YouTube channel. So uh, the, the information is in front of you right now. Feel free to, to connect up to that. And even if you miss a week, every week they're uploaded there. You can catch up with the previous weeks. We have a, a couple of years now worth of uh, sermons that are uploaded there. And uh, it will be a blessing to you, hopefully, not only to you, but you can share it, you can link to it, you can send it to a friend, you can invite a friend to come to that channel, and uh, they can be blessed as well. So if the word is blessing you, I encourage and invite you to be a part of the ministry as well by helping to share it with somebody else who needs to hear what we're talking about. And right now we have a very interesting topic that we are sharing about. It's somewhat controversial, and even in the church, which is kind of you know a, a little bit of a, an off thing to think about. We're talking about the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there are lots and lots of opinions in the church as to what is and what is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've been sharing about that now for several weeks, continue to do so today, and I pray that it will bless you. I do want to invite you to come to any of our services here. They take place on Sundays and Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study where we come together and we really kind of grind into the Word of God in, in various ways, depending on what's being taught on Sunday. Sometimes it's a more expanded version of that. Sometimes it's powerful and anointed prayer and, and praise together. Sometimes it's intercession. Sometimes it's a typical, a topical study through the Bible in different chapters of the Bible. It varies depending on what the Lord says, but it, it's always a great, great time to assemble together. Sometimes it's a Q&A. We've had times when people have just come and ask questions that they have from the Bible, and we just share insight on that. So in many, many ways, it will help you to personally grow and develop in the Word of God, and I invite you to join us again 645 on Wednesdays. If you come on Wednesday, come to the back side of the church. You won't see cars in front. You have to come to the back and and the rear entrance into the classroom is where we meet on Wednesday nights. Now on Sundays, you can join us here for Sunday school, which takes place as well in the classrooms at 10 o'clock till about 11. And then 1130, we gather for our morning worship here in the sanctuary. You are invited to join us at any of these services, any and all. And I believe you'll be blessed by all of them in various ways. So come and be a part of what's going on. We have a special series that we're doing right now uh, in the church called Abundant Living. And uh, there's more to come on that because uh, as we continue over these next few weeks, coming up in a couple weeks from now, it kind of culminates with a special workshop taking place on Saturday, the uh, 18th. It'll be a midday, mid-afternoon event, and uh, it's going to feature guest speakers coming in that are going to help us to really learn how to uh, live abundantly in all the different ways that God would have us live. The Bible says that he'd have us live life more abundantly. And so that's spiritually, that's naturally, and emotionally. And so we have some professionals that are going to be coming in, and they're going to be teaching us about how to live abundantly, emotionally, and spiritually. You know, it's, it's, it, you can't just be abundant in one and think that your life is going to be great. You can't be, you know, just um, emotionally fine and stable, but spiritually a hot mess and, and physically worn down. You have to be able to keep a life in your in yourself in all these different ways. And I believe God has some things to share with us uh, about how to live life abundantly. So we're teaching you on Sundays, and as well, this workshop is going to be powerful. We're also going to be covering some financial things for those of us who, you know, it's hard to live abundantly.
certainly when your financials are all messed up. You need a way out. You need a get, way to get ahead. You need to learn some things. Uh, we're going to have a lot for you. So come and join us for this workshop. I believe you will truly be blessed by it. Now, uh, let me take you to the Word of God. I, I share with you that I was t- sharing about the Holy Spirit in this series, and this continues on. I share with you over the last couple of weeks about what it is, about how to know when you've actually received it versus when you haven't. Because not everybody has. It's according to the Bible, not according to me. But uh, you can. this is about uh, what to do to get it. If you want to receive it, what should I do? It's called Believe It and Receive It. And I pray this blesses you and I pray it gives you insight. And don't forget, you can share these series of sermons with somebody else through our website. You can go on to the YouTube channel. You can link to it. You can share it to your Facebook page. Uh, you can also forward it to other people as a link or as a copy and uh, bless somebody else as well. Looking forward to this being a blessing to you and those around you and I hope that you'll come and join us in service. Listen, if you don't have a church we are here for you. You need to be connected up in a place where you can be taught and learn and receive and flow in the power of God both in terms of what you receive and what you can pour into others. So join us here real soon. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon. One thing we need to, do need to understand that there are times when there are certain things that will try and hinder us. There are hindrances that can get in the way. I've, I've known people that have sought the Holy Spirit. And sometimes people have gotten frustrated and seen people come to the altar once or twice and nothing really happened. And they got frustrated and they quit. They gave up. Got upset. Sometimes got mad with God. Sometimes we wonder what it is. Amen. That why am I, am I not receiving this gift? If it's a gift and it's right there, why don't I receive it? There are at times certain things that hinder us from receiving what God has for us. One of those things, first of all, is full and complete surrender to God. Full and complete faith unto God. Full and complete desire. A lot of times the reason people aren't receiving is because they have not fully opened and surrendered themselves to God. They have made maybe partially there I've watched people, I remember praying with one person, and over a period of time, every time they came to pray, they began to gradually just begin to loosen up more and more, because they started, they were afraid, and and they didn't want to surrender control, they didn't want anything inside of them, they didn't want anything moving, they didn't want to lose control, and so they were afraid, and the first time we prayed with them, all they had was fear, they were just pulling back, scared. Next time we prayed with them, they got a little bit more comfortable. Next time, they began to relax a little bit and just began to really desire to let this thing happen. And then after a while, they just came in one day and we prayed, and as they prayed, they just, yep, I'm ready, and opened up, and there it came. We have to be able to surrender to God and avoid things getting in the way. Some of the other things that, that hinder us, there are things that can stand between you and God. question you can ask yourself sometimes. What is it that you hold dearer in your life than God? Sometimes we don't even realize how badly we're hanging on to certain things. That they become more important to us than God. Think about it. What was the first sin? What has sin always been about? Selfishness. It's always been about putting something ahead of God. Adam and Eve put their own elevation higher than their relationship with God when they ate of the forbidden fruit, to become like God. When we have things in our lives that we hold closer and tighter than God, it becomes difficult for then God to enter into our lives the way, amen, that he wants to because we're not fully surrendered. You can have all kinds of things in your life that are more important to you than God. Your job, your employment can be more important to you than God. Your finances can be more important to you. It's more important to me to have money. I'd rather have money, amen, and be okay than be poor and have to trust in God. I don't want to go there. I never want to be poor again. I don't want to be in that situation. You can have friends. You can have family members. Sometimes people put their children in such a place that they're more important than them God. My son, my daughter, I love them so much. And you follow them as they lead you away from God. I've seen people leave the church because their children weren't in church and they were going to follow the children 
No one good while the children weren't going to go to church. But here now, the children are not going to church, and they're not going to church. Because they're following the children. You can't let things, people, situations have a stronger hold on you than God. They become hindrances in surrendering to God and letting him have his way. What other things do we hold dearer to us, amen, than God? Sometimes it's not a thing. Sometimes it's attitude. Sometimes it's situations. Anger. I'm mad about what happened to me. And I can never forgive that situation. And my anger about that thing causes me never to be able to release it and surrender it to God. Bitterness in my life about situations that I've been through and things that I've gone through, how people have treated me. I can never let that go. And because you can never let it go, you hinder the way for God in your life. Fear can be a hindrance to God. Faith and fear don't work together. God can't step into your life, amen, when fear has bound you up and caused you to close it up. You've got to be able to release fear and take on faith. Self-indulgences, sins of all type, become hindrances between us and God. Another thing that can become a hindrance to us receiving God are demonic holds. Some of us have walked ourselves into some situations. Stepped in and around some things, amen, that have bound us up and the devil doesn't necessarily want to let you go. And before God can truly have his way, sometimes those strongholds in your life have to be broken first. That's why sometimes we have to pray with people. Sometimes we'll be praying for the Holy Spirit. In the midst of praying for the Holy Spirit, we end up praying for demonic control. Break this hole, loose this shackle, get this thing off of them. Sometimes demons have to be caused, caused to flee before the presence of God can fully come in and take control. Doesn't mean that God can't operate in and around your life. It doesn't mean that God has lost control of your life. But to be inside your vessel, your vessel has to be purged clean. And that means surrendering to God. Another reason we say sometimes it's so much easier for children to receive. Amen. They, they don't have nearly as much on them <laughs> as some of us have carried with us. Amen. We've carried a lifetime. Amen. We've cut down our faith. Amen. We don't trust. We don't believe. We're skeptical. We're doubtful. Prove it. Show it to me. Amen. And we've carried all kind of stuff along the way throughout our lives, which causes us to have all this baggage that sometimes needs to be dealt with before we can truly receive what God has in store for us. But let me tell you something. If you've got baggage that's in the way of you and God, I suggest to you that you get started removing that baggage now. I can't get the Holy Spirit because I got too much baggage. Well, don't just sit there with the baggage. It's time to get rid of it. It's time to peel off the layers. It's time to let go of some things, some hindrances in your life. I said that this goes in some, to some degree for those who've received the Holy Spirit as well. Once the Holy Spirit comes, the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. He's not leaving. Sometimes he becomes dormant because we allow ourselves to be consumed by other things. The Holy Spirit will not force his way in your life. And there are times, even when you receive the Holy Spirit, that you allow yourself to be caught up with the same situations of bitterness and anger and other things becoming priority. The Bible says that the cares of this world, amen, and the deceitfulness of riches choke out the sea. Amen. You've got God inside of you, but you've gotten choked out. You can't see. You can't hear from God. You can't move or operate the way God would have you to operate. And so you're just out there doing your own thing. Now, making your own place, figuring out as you go. The Holy Spirit is not leading you anymore. Sometimes you don't even realize, wait a minute, that's not God, that's you. Because you've allowed yourself to be consumed up with other things. Sometimes you have to stop and pull back and say, wait a minute, I need to let some things go. I need to peel some things off so that God can have his way in my life. I want to close with this today. What do we need to do to receive the Holy Spirit? What do we do? Talked about this a little bit on Wednesdays. We're ready. You're hungry. You have a desire. On the day of Pentecost, the people were hungry. They had a desire to know. They just said, Lord, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we do? We're just ready to do it. What do we do if we want to receive the Holy Spirit? There are some things that we do in common to help prepare 
for the presence of the, of the Holy Spirit, the first thing we do is we set the atmosphere. We set an atmosphere for the presence of the Lord. How do we do that? We begin to turn our hearts and our minds to God. Sometimes through worship, sometimes through prayer. We just begin to open our hearts to God. We just begin to lift up an atmosphere where the presence of God will desire to be in. The Bible says he loves to be in the, in the midst of those who praise him. He steps into the praise of worshipers. He desires, he seeks for worshipers. And so we begin to open ourselves, not just in songs and not just in clapping, but in our hearts. We open our hearts to God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I magnify you. Lord, I glorify you. My heart begins to open up to you as we set an atmosphere through worship and then through our faith because we have an atmosphere of believing and expectation, anticipation of what God is going to do. Yes, Lord, I believe you're coming. Yes, I believe you're real. Yes, I believe you have this promise for me. Yes, I'm anticipating what you're about to do. Yes, oh God, I'm stepping into your presence and I'm ready to receive. Come into this place, Holy Spirit, and have your way. As we set an atmosphere and the presence of God begins to move into the place. And we're preparing the place for the Holy Spirit to come in. And there's a movement of the presence of God from being in the atmosphere, from the outside, to then being upon us and to ultimately coming in us. There are times, and we've read many scriptures, the Bible shows us that men laid hands on on them and they received the Holy Spirit. There have been times, many times, when I've laid hands on people, and as I laid hands on people, I could feel the very presence of God begin to move through my hand and into that person. It's called impartation. Lay hands on someone and the presence of God begins to move there. And I've always prayed and talked to God about it because you come to one person and you know that presence of God just began to move through them. And you come to another one and Nothing. You come to the next one and nothing. You come to the next one and there's the presence of God. And so I've asked God over the years, you know, what's the difference? Why this one? Why not that one? And a lot of it, I believe, goes to what I just described to you. There are times and things in our lives which help us to be truly prepared, to be ready to receive. And then there are some hindrances that we got to deal with. Some situations in our lives that aren't right. Some things in our homes some things in our, in our spirit, some things in our attitude that need to be changed and we need to be ready to release and yield to and hinder us from receiving. But when we are ready, and by the way, that readiness isn't simply an act of having stripped everything. It's always good to do that. But that act is a, an attitude of the heart. I've seen people, I've heard stories, People came in the church high, stoned out of their head. Some drunk came to the altar, were prayed for, and the Holy Spirit immediately fell on them. The high went away. Drunkenness instantly sobered. Because when their heart was ready, God knows how to change everything else. It's the power of God we're talking about here. It's not all about what we have to do. It's about the heart that we have to achieve and surrendering our heart to the presence of God. When the atmosphere is set to seek the Holy Spirit, there's four things that we do. Number one, we believe in it. You have to set your heart to believe. You have to set your heart past the doubts, past the questions. There's a time for questioning and there's a time to let it go and say, okay, it's just here for me. I believe, God, what you have for me. I believe. It's stirred in my heart. I've heard it. I've received it. I've read it. I've, I'm, and I'm ready. I know. Believe that it is and believe that it is for you. Believe that this promise includes you. Not just the person next to you. Not just your friends. Not just your family members that told you they went and got saved. But for you. Believe that the promise is for you. Second thing you want to do is you want to desire it. Some people believe in it, but they don't want it. 
I've, I've heard people say, I believe so-and-so has it. I, I believe other people receive it. I just don't know if it necessarily going to happen to me. Amen? You have to believe it and you have to desire it as a gift of God. God, if this is something that you have in store for my life, if this is something that's going to make me better, then it's something I want. Stop right there. Because sometimes we try and rationalize past that. Well, maybe, I don't know, under certain conditions, perhaps it could be, I'm not really sure. No, let it all go. God, if this is something that's true and real, if it's a promise to the believers, and I'm a believer, then I want it. I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know everything that's going to happen. I don't fully understand. You don't have to. You're not going to understand most things that God shares with you. But I know this. I want it. If it's for me, I want it. Give it to me. Let me have it. Let me receive it. You know what's crazy? We read in Acts chapter 8, amen, last week, and it talked about the one man, I believe his name was Stephen. He was a sorcerer. Stephen dealt with witchcraft. Stephen held up the whole city, amen, by witchcraft. He used it for power and for control. When Stephen saw the power of the Holy Spirit, the reality of what it was, when he saw what it was doing, when he saw people were being healed and delivered, that man who was a, who was a witch wanted it. If a witch wants the Holy Spirit, shouldn't we want it? He said, let me have it too. I can do these things that you're doing. You have to desire it. And you have to desire it to the point where you're ready to resist every other desire because this is what happens when you seek the Holy Spirit, when you go after it. The devil will try and put up a blockade of other things things that are more important to you, things that become distractions. He'll cause you to think about that person in your life. He'll cause you to think about that situation. He'll cause you to think about stupid, crazy things. He'll cause you to think about the, the football game or the baseball game that's coming on. He'll cause you to think about what you're doing after this, what picnic you're going to, what party you got next. He'll cause you to think about anything and everything. He'll cause you to think, what am I going to do about this? What about my grocery list? What are we eating tonight? Did I leave the stove on? He'll cause you to think about anything other than God. You have to desire it enough to put everything, every other distraction away and put God absolutely first. The third thing you do is ask for it. This list doesn't sound real hard so far, is it? Believe it, desire it, ask for it. If you want the Holy Spirit, ask for it. Seek it. Pursue it. Ask God for it. So many things in life, we hear about it, we say, oh, that would be nice. But we never take any action towards what we want. If you desire it, do you desire it enough to do something different about it? Do you desire it enough to change your norm? Do you desire it enough to stay at service a little longer? Do you desire it enough to come to a midweek Bible study? Do you desire it enough to change your work schedule? to meet somebody to pray with you. Desire it enough to change your, your, your patterns at home so that you can pray in a time when you'd normally be doing other things. You'd rather be watching television. You'd rather be doing spending time with your family. Do you desire it enough to make it a priority enough to seek it? Does it mean enough to you to go after it? Some of y'all want some things in life or have wanted some things and you've been willing to make some big changes to get them. Amen? Worked a lot of hours. On a lot of jobs. My wife, man, she used to she used to get in her mind she wanted something. That woman would work. <laughs> She'd take on two jobs. She would work midnight, overnight. She would do pretty much anything. She was one time in wintertime, she was driving a half hour outside of town every day in the, in the winter. Her life and limb on these 104 half snow covered streets. One time she made donuts overnight. See shift making donuts to make money. Something she wanted, or she wanted one of us to have. If she wanted something, she'd make something happen. How many of us want the Holy Spirit enough to do something about it? Or are we just going to watch and say, that would be nice. The things that you desire, you pursue. Every man, every woman married somebody. You desired them. You first pursue. Amen? Wait for things to just drop in your lap. 
Pursue the things you desire. Can I get an amen, somebody? Thank you. (laughs) If we desire the Holy Spirit, if we believe in it, then we need to pursue it. We need to ask for it. We need to seek for it. And when we pray to God on that, we, we open up and we draw our hearts in and we lift up God and we lift him up. We can draw into his presence. And the fourth thing we do is receive it. That's that simple. That's a gift. You just receive it. You desire the Holy Spirit in your life today. You need to take some action. You need, if you believe in it, if you desire it, it's time to take some action. Lord, I'm ready. Let me receive.